Alrighty, folks, I'm now 8-0. My last eight Major League Baseball package plays on my premium site. That's my MLB package picks. And if you sign up for that membership here today, you're going to get access to that package every single day for the next 30 days. The math actually works out to be just 66 cents a day. But wait, there's more because if you sign up for that package, I'm also going to throw in all of my cheaper memberships for you absolutely free. They're going to be included with your purchase. Now, if you don't need all of those plays, but maybe you could use one a day, you may want to think about signing up for my $1.99 daily best play. It gives you access to one premium selection every single day for the next 30 days. The math works out to be just six cents a day. And of course, if you want the big boy package and you want to, you know, access every single uh, premium play of mine that I give out, you're going to want to sign up for my full access, all-inclusive chairman package. It's my best package. It's really the only one worth buying. Uh, chairman members get access to every single personal play of mine, every single package, every single day for the next 30 days. And as an added bonus, you also get access to my chairman podcast absolutely free. It's included with your purchase. Now, I currently have over 610 members who are signed up and active on my premium page right now. And with that, folks, we're going to dive into some free content. Let's start off with the Cubs at the Tigers, 6.40 p.m. East. Chicago's a buck 20, totals nine. Drew Smiley for Chicago, Reese Olsen for Detroit. Now, Olsen's recorded only two wins through 63+. plus. The Reddy's also got an ERA close to five. Now, these Tiger batters are also averaging fewer runs per contest than any other club in the AL Central. They're facing a nine-win Drew Smiley, who's got 112 strikeouts on the year. Meanwhile, at the plate, the Cubbies are a top-five run-producing team. Cody Bellinger is hitting 322, and he also has the sixth-highest OPS average in the bigs. Meanwhile, Jamer Candelario is hitting 339 with the Cubs with an OPS in the 900s. Six out of Chicago's last 10 outings did stay under the total. Meanwhile, Detroit went 8-2 and two to the under in their last 10. Give me the Cubs, minus a buck 20, under 9. Next ball game, Rockies raise 6.40 p.m. East. Tampa Bay's minus 260, totals 9 runs. Zach Littell for the raise, tie block for Colorado. Now, Block's got an ERA in the fours along with a 1.46 whip. The Rockies are also having all kinds of problems at the plate when they travel. They're averaging just 3.7 runs a game away from home. They're facing Zach Littell, who's got an ERA in the threes, along with a solid 1.17 whip. Meanwhile, at the dish, the Rays are a top three run-producing team in the uh, American League. Yanni Diaz has the fourth highest batting average in the majors, seventh in OPS. Meanwhile, Isak Paredes, he's the team leader in RBI. Margot, Mejia, and Walls are still out for Tampa. Chris Bryan, inactive for Colorado. The Rockies went 60% to the over in their last 10. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay went 7-3 to the over in their last 10 themselves. Give me the Rays, minus 1.5, over 9. Next game, Giants-Phillies, 6.40 p.m. East. Philadelphia's minus 145, totals 9. Taiwan Walker for Philadelphia. Kyle Harrison making his debut for San Francisco. And as a team, the Giants are playing some pretty bad baseball. They took the loss in seven out of their last ten. They now have a losing record on the road. And these San Francisco hitters are also having big problems with strikeouts in the box. These guys are punching out 10.6 times a game on the road. That's actually worst in the majors in that particular category. Now they're facing Taiwan Walker, who continues to win ball games. The Reddy's now 13 of 5 on the season with the Phils, with 106 strikeouts. And out of Walker's last dozen starts, the Phillies got the W 10 times. Nick Castellanos, he's the club leader in hits. Kyle Schwarber has the most RBI. Christian Pache is still out for the Fightins. Crawford, Pollock, and Yastrzemski inactive for the Giants. San Francisco went 60% to the under in their last 10. Meanwhile, Philadelphia saw three out of their last five at the bank stay under the line. Give me the Phillies, minus a buck 45, under nine runs. Next matchup, Cardinals, Pirates, 7.05 Eastern first pitch. 
Pittsburgh's minus a buck 20, totals 10 runs. Johan Oviedo for the Buckos, Adam Wainwright for St. Louis. And as bad as Wayno's been this year, he is facing a Pittsburgh lineup who just can't hit the baseball. These guys average only 7.7 uh, hits a game. Uh, it actually puts them in the bottom three in the majors in that particular category. Starting pitcher Johan Oviedo, he's also given these guys a little chance to win. The righties recorded 13 losses this year with an ERA of 455. Now he's facing a Cardinals club who can still hit the baseball despite their record. These guys are a top five hit producing lineup in the National League. Nolan Arenado's got the eighth most RBI in the majors. Paul Goldschmidt's the team leader in hits. Carlson, Newtbar, Donovan, and Gorman are all still out for the Redbirds. Henry Dave is inactive for Pittsburgh. Three out of the Pirates' last four at PNC Park got over the total. They also went 60% to the over in their last 10. Five out of Adam Wainwright's last seven starts with St. Louis got over the line. Give me the Cardinals plus one and a half over 10. Next ball game, Blue Jays, Orioles, 705 Eastern first pitch. Baltimore's minus a buck 20, totals eight runs. Grayson Rodriguez for the O's, Yusei Kikuchi for Toronto. Now the Cooch man is nine and four with an ERA in the threes. The lefties also punched out 132 batters. When it comes to offensive production, the Jays have one of the best hitters in the American League in Beau Bichette. He's got the sixth highest batting average in the major leagues right now. He also leads the roster in hits. Fly Guerrero is the team leader in home runs and RBI. They're facing Grayson Rodriguez on the mound, who really uh, hasn't been great for the uh, for the O's. The righty's got an ERA of 544 along with a 1.41 whip. Now, these Baltimore pitchers tend to allow uh, a good amount of hits at Camden Yards. They're in the bottom 10 in hits per game on their own diamond. Six out of the O's last 10 meetings with Toronto did fall under the total. So if you're into historical trends, plenty of unders to go around. Four out of the Jays' last five road games stayed under the total as well. Give me the Blue Jays plus a dollar under eight. Next matchup I have for you, it is going to be Nationals-Yankees, 705 Eastern first pitch. The New York Yankees are minus a buck 80 in the Bronx here tonight. Totals eight and a half. Carlos Rodon for New York, Josiah Gray for Washington. And even though Gray's record isn't great, uh, the righty has punched out 114 batters. And he's got an ERA in the three. So I think he should probably have his way with the, uh, the pinstripers here tonight. Now, as a team, the Nats have been playing some really good baseball here recently. They got the W in seven out of their last nine. And they continue to uh, pound the baseball. Now, if you don't know what I mean, well, folks, the Nats are actually in the top three in the National League in hits per game. Yeah, believe it or not, that is a, a crazy stat. But yeah, top three in the National League in hits per game. Lane Thomas has 142 hits on the year. Joey Manessas, he is the club leader in driving runners in. Now, they're facing Carlos Rodon, who's just one and four with an ERA in the sevens. Meanwhile, to play at the Yankees, well, they just... Um, they just can't hit in the Bronx. They're averaging a dismal 7.1 hits a game in front of their own crowd. Anthony Rizzo is still out for the Bombers. The Yankees are 20 and 14 to the under against National League opponents. Meanwhile, the Nats are 67% to the under in their interleague road games. Give me Washington plus one and a half under eight and a hook. Next ball game, Dodgers, Guardians, 710 Eastern start time. The L.A. Dodgers are minus 210, totals nine runs. Bobby Miller for the Dodgers, Noah Syndergaard for Cleveland. Now, Syndergaard's got an ERA in the sixes uh, overall for the season. Uh, actually, a 506 ERA with his uh, short stint with the Guardians. Now, as a team, the Guardians lost six out of their last nine. And they continue to struggle in the box. Cleveland's averaging under 3.6 runs a game at Progressive Field. Uh, they're facing Bobby Miller, who's 7-2 with an ERA in the threes. Uh, the righty's also got a solid 1.17 whip and uh, averages just about a strikeout and in it. Now, when it comes to offensive production, no one's scoring more on the road than the, the uh, Dodgers right now. 
Uh, the Dodgers average a league best 5.9 runs a game in their travels. Freddie Freeman's in the top three in both batting average and OPS. Mookie Betts has the second highest OPS average in the bigs. Johnny DeLuca's out for the Dodgers. David Fry inactive for Cleveland. The Guardians saw their last five straight in their own ballpark stay under the total. They're also 7-3 to the under in their last 10 at any location. Now, the Dodgers on the other side, they went 80% to the under in their last 10 themselves. Give me the Dodgers, minus one and a half, under nine. Next matchup I have for you, it is going to be Mets at the Braves, 7.20 p.m. East. Atlanta's minus 230 at home, totals 10 and a half. Bryce Elder for Atlanta, Tyler McGill for New York. Now, McGill's got an ERA in the mid-fives along with a 1.70 whip. And even if McGill throws well, probably not going to get the run support he needs. The Mets are averaging just 7.8 hits a game. Now, they're facing a 9-4 Bryce Elder, who's got an ERA in the threes. And uh, even if Elder has a rough go of things, uh, the Braves can outscore anyone. Uh, they're, they they're currently the league leaders in runs per game and hits. Ronald Acuna is in the top five in the bigs in both at, uh, batting average and OPS. He currently has a wins above replacement of 6.2. Meanwhile, Matt Olson leads the bigs uh, in both home runs and RBI. Uh, and in the Braves' last 10 meetings with the Mets, they averaged over 8.1 runs a game. So if you're into historical trends, uh, Atlanta certainly having their way offensively. Starling Marte is still out for New York. Vientos and Guillaume also inactive. Six out of the Mets' last 10 meetings with the Braves did get over the total. So once again, if you're into historical trends, certainly want to think about that one there. Now Atlanta went 13-5 and five to the over in their divisional contest at Truist Park. Give me the Braves minus one and a half over 10 and a hook. Next matchup, Bo Sox, Astros, 8-10 Eastern first pitch. Houston's a buck 50, totals eight and a half. Justin Verlander for Houston, Tanner Houck for Boston. Houck's just three and six with an ERA in the fives. These Boston pitchers have also allowed their fair share of hits. They're in the bottom 10 in hits allowed per contest. They're facing Justin Verlander, who's got an overall ERA in the threes uh, between the Astros and the Mets. And at the plate, the Astros have had some Ample success against Boston in recent gatherings. The Strohs are averaging 5.8 runs per contest in their last 10 meetings with Boston. Kyle Tucker's got 132 hits on the year. He's fourth in the big leagues in RBI. Meanwhile, Jose Altuve is hitting 322 with an OPS in the 900s. Kessinger and Abreu are out for Houston. Jaron Duran's questionable for Boston. Six out of the Bo Sox last 10 meetings with Houston did fall under the total. He also saw the undercash in five out of Tanner Houck's last seven starts. Give him the Astros minus a buck 50, under eight and a half. Next ball game, it is going to be Twins Brewers, 8-10 Eastern first pitch. Minnesota's a buck 20 on the road, totals eight and a half. Bailey Ober for the Twins, Wade Miley for Milwaukee. Now Miley continues to be solid. I don't feel like uh, a lot of people talk about him, but uh, he continues to kind of cruise and be really good under the radar. The lefty 6-3 with an ERA of 305. He also has himself a 1.17 whip. Now, as a team, the Brewers got the W in 7 out of their last uh, 10 uh, ball games, and they performed, uh, uh, you know, really well against American League opponents. Sorry, brain fart. Glitch. Uh... Milwaukee's seven games above 500 in their interleague ball games. They're facing a Twins club on the other side who plays their worst baseball away from Minnesota. And at the plate, these guys are averaging double-digit strikeouts a game. Now, as good as Bailey Ober has been for the uh, you know most of the season, he's recorded six losses, and he does not have a winning record. Buxton, Castro, Gordon, and Miranda are all out for Minnesota. Jesse Winker, an actor for the Brew Crew. Six out of Milwaukee's last 10 ball games did fall under the total. The Twins went 60% to the under in their last 10. Give me the Brewers plus a dollar under eight and a half. 
Next contest, Mariners, White Sox, 810 Eastern first pitch. Uh, Seattle's minus a buck 60, totals eight and a half. Brian Wu for the Mariners, Mike Clevenger for Chicago. And even though Clevy's thrown well this year, uh, the righty does not have a winning record. And a lot of that is due to some poor plate appearances. The White Sox are a bottom five run-producing lineup at home. They're facing Brian Wu, who uh, averaged over a strikeout an inning. And he also has a 1.24 whip. And because of how good they've been recently, the Mariners are now a top 10 run-producing team on the road. Julio Rodriguez, he's got 143 hits on the year. Club leader in RBI. Well, Cal Raleigh's got the most home runs on the roster. Tom Murphy is still out for Seattle. Tim Anderson's inactive for Chicago. Four out of the White Sox last five home games did get over the total. Uh, they're also 70% to the over in their last 10 at any location. Uh, the Mariners went 7-1 the over in their last eight on the road. Give me the Mariners minus a buck 60, over eight and a half. Next ball game, Reds, Angels, 938 East. The Angels are minus a buck 40, totals nine. Lucas Giolito for Los Angeles, Graham Ashcraft for Cincinnati. And even though Ashcraft's numbers haven't been great, the Reds do play their best baseball on the road. And in addition to that, they've also been dominating the American League in their road trips. The Reds have actually won 80% of their ball games against American League opponents on the road. Spencer Steers, the club leader in RBI and hits. Matt McClain's just four points shy of batting 300. Now, they are facing an Angels club who's, you know, they shoved all their chips all in at the All-Star break, and uh, they got caught bluffing. <laughs> they got caught with eight high. Because, uh, yeah, the Angels have a losing interleague record, and they've had a tough time getting the W with Lucas Giolito, uh, the righty's just 1-3 with the Angels this year, with an ERA in the eights. Uh, meanwhile, as a team, the Angels lost six out of their last nine. And they're striking out more times a game at home than any other franchise in baseball besides one. Trout, Rendon, Crone, and Neto are out for Los Angeles. Kasali, Newman, and India are inactive for Cincinnati. Since he's gone 67% to the over in their interleague road games. Meanwhile, the Angels went 7-3 to the over in their last 10. Give me the Reds, plus 1.5, over 9. Next matchup, it is going to be Royals at the Athletics, 9.40 p.m. East. Kansas City's minus a buck and a quarter, totals 8 runs. Zach Greinke for Kansas City, Hogan Harris for Oakland. And uh, even though Harris stinks, uh, the A's did get the W last night over this very Royals team. They beat KC 6-4, and they actually slammed four home runs in the process. Giloff, Rooker, Diaz, and Langeliers, they all had home runs in that affair. Uh, Butler had a multi-hit game as well. Now they're facing a sorry Zach Greinke, who's recorded only one win through 110-plus innings this year. Uh, the righty's just 1-12 with an ERA of 553. As a team, the Royals lost six out of their last seven. They're having a tough time producing runs on the road. KC scores a league low 3.4 runs a game in their travels. Seven out of these teams' last 10 head-to-head -head gatherings did fall under the uh, posted total. Uh, give me Oakland, plus 105, under eight. Next contest, it is going to be Marlins Padres, 940 p.m. East. San Diego's minus 175, total seven and a half runs. Blake Snell for the Pods, Jesus Lazardo for Miami. Now, Lazardo has recorded eight losses this season and has an ERA in the fours. Now, as a team, the Marlins have had a rough go of things here recently. They're on a three-game skid, and they also took the loss in five out of their last six. And when these guys play on the road, well, the Fish uh, really just can't score runs. They're averaging only 3.9 runs a game away from Miami. They're facing a 10-win Blake Snell, who's certainly doing his part for San Diego. Uh, the lefties punched out 176 batters. He's got an ERA in the twos. Now, these San Diego pitchers have also made it really tough to hit at Peco Park. They're allowing just 3.8 runs a game in front of their home crowd. Now, six out of the pod's last 10 gatherings, 
uh, with Miami, well, they fell under the total. Uh, they also saw the under cash in seven out of their last 10 ball games. Now, Miami on the other side, they went 3-1 to the under in their last four on the road. Give me the Padres, minus a buck 75, under seven and a half. And with that, folks, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup for the video. It's going to be in that Rangers-Diamondbacks game, 9.40 p.m. East. Arizona's minus a buck and a quarter at home, totals eight and a half. Zach Gallen for the D-backs, John Gray for Texas. And as good as Gray's been this year, well, the Rangers just aren't playing good enough to get the job done right now. They're currently on a five-game skid, and they've had all kinds of problems uh, with the National League this year. Out of 19 interleague road games, the Rangers got the W only six times. Now, they're facing an Arizona team who got the W in eight out of their last ten, and they do a nice job at the plate. Matter of fact, these guys are in the top three in the majors in fewest strikeouts at the dish. Cattell Marte is the team leader in hits. Uh, Christian Walker, uh, he's done a lot this year. He's in the top 10 in the National League, in both home runs and RBI. And even if the bats go cold here for Arizona, uh, they've got a 13 win Zach Gallon on the mound. And uh, he's been really tough to hit against. The, the righty has uh, currently got an ERA of 317, along with 168 strikeouts. Now, Gallon's also got himself a stingy 1.05 whip. Arizona went 60% to the under in their last 10. The Rangers saw three out of their last four on the road stay under the line. Give me the D-backs, minus a buck and a quarter, under eight and a half. And with that, folks, now it is time for our quick pick recap. Give me the Cubs, minus a buck 20, under nine runs. Tampa Bay Rays, minus one and a half, over nine. Phillies, minus 145, under nine. I'm 8-0 in my last eight. Major League Baseball package picks on my premium page. The link for my premium page is in my bio. St. Louis Cardinals, plus one and a half, over 10. Blue Jays, plus a dollar, under eight. Nationals plus one and a half, under eight and a hook. Dodgers minus one and a half, under nine. Atlanta Braves minus one and a half, over ten and a half runs. Astros minus a buck fifty, under eight and a half. Brewers plus a dollar, under eight and a hook. Mariners minus one sixty, over eight and a half. Reds plus one and a half, over nine. Oakland A's plus one oh five, under eight. San Diego Padres, minus 175, under 7.5. With my next and final free pick for the video, give me the Diamondbacks, minus a buck and a quarter, under 8.5 runs.